morning everybody. Calm Biker here. Just had my bike in for its MOT and it's passed. So I'm now taking it on a ride to fill in the final bit of the perimeter of my lanes challenge. That challenge is to ride every lane in East Riding of Yorkshire. Which begs the question, why am I approaching the Homer Bridge and crossing over into Lincolnshire? Well, the river is actually quite a good southern boundary for the vast majority of the East Riding of Yorkshire. Uh, there's just one little bit that goes a bit lower, and I've already been there. That's the southwest corner of my entire route, or my entire uh, area, I should say, that I'm planning to cover. Um, if you've watched my videos recently, you'll know I've done all of the uh, west, the north, and the east already, and I've just got the south bit to fill in. Just looking at the uh, mess of the weather, it looks like I'll be getting rather wet today doing it. So I thought I could follow a load of little roads and work my way across uh, the bottom of East Yorkshire to that fill in that final kind of bottom left bit. Or I could go a faster way, I could go down the A63 which is the main route uh, that leads to the motorway for uh, our area. Only the entirety of that is a 40 miles an hour zone at the minute because there's roadworks going on everywhere. So I thought I'll be slightly sneaky. I'll head across the river and I'll go around the top, the northern bit of uh, North Lincolnshire. And then I can join up at the bottom left. And it'll still give me a boundary, which is nice. And I also thought there's some nice roads in down there that I can fill in and have a nice little ride. And now I'm looking at the weather and thinking some of those roads are not necessarily the ones I'd want to be on <laughs> in the rain. For those uh, roads that aren't used that often, and when they are used, they're used by tractors. So they're liable to be quite muddy and slippery. So, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. I've got two weeks off work, so of course, it started raining every day again. <laughs> it was roasting hot before I uh, took my days off, or my two weeks off, and uh, it got to the Friday and one of my work colleagues in the middle of a Teams call said, uh, you can tell Richard's having some time off. I said, why is that? He said, look at the weather forecast. And it's turned from sunny and hot to wet and cold. So I might be getting a lot of this over the next two weeks. Well, I suppose at least the bike will be clean. Kinda. Hands up who doesn't know how wide the car is. Quite pretty around here in Lincolnshire. Starting to see um, autumn colours coming. I'm coming through Alkborough at the minute. I didn't think I'd been this way before, but I have because I keep seeing signs to Julian's Bower, which I came to. Uh, I think I was probably on the other Honda, the one that got written off, but I may be wrong. Might be on a Kawasaki of some sort. That's the little uh, turf maze is in this village. So I'm close to where I've been before. I'll put a link to it in the corner. It's, um, it's a silly little thing, but I like it. That kind of daft thing I do like. Little grass maze, little turf maze, or labyrinth, I suppose, technically. Um, I'm tempted to come back to it with the drone, because when I did visit it I didn't own a drone. And uh, I think it would be quite quite amusing from above. Running around the uh, little turf maze. Nice little properties around here, I'm not sure where I am. It's not part of the uh, 
Yorkshire route, so no factoids on the screen this time. I'm having to ride with my visor open, very frustrating. I don't know if it's the pin lock is getting worse uh, or if it's just the shape of this helmet, but this is the second pin lock visor insert I've used on this helmet. I got one with it and it worked for a little while and then just stopped working. So I replaced it and uh, this one's not working well either. I just find that it starts to mist in from the top and I don't know if it's the shape of the visor or not but when it's been properly raining and it's been properly raining uh, there's a lot of moisture in the air it just starts to fog up and then it's actually worse at that point than not having a pinlock because when you don't have a pinlock you can open your visor and it all magically vanishes in a second with the pinlock the air isn't getting behind it to clear that piece so it then takes several minutes to clear I'm thinking maybe it isn't the pin lock itself, but just a bad fit. I kind of tried fiddling with it a lot. This is on a Shark D Squall 3. So anybody else who's got one of those, squirrel there. Eh? Anybody else who's got one of those and a pin lock, just intrigued to know, do you have the same problem? Yeah, I can see the river there. It's one of the rivers that feeds into the Humber. I'm going to be tracking around that because at the minute that part of it that hopefully you should be able to see over there or perhaps not now, now we've come down a bit lower that part's tracking south but it uh, meanders quite a lot and uh, heads off to the west I suppose it actually comes in from the east is a, uh, from the west I should say to the east is a better way of describing it because of the direction it's flowing I'm going to be skirting around underneath that and then I should join up with East Riding again. Big solar farm. They're definitely into the renewables around here. That's a, a lot of solar. And there's a heck of a lot of wind turbines around here as well. I guess a fair whack have we gone into that uh, either a business park or an industrial park. I'm considering the solar system for my uh, house at the moment. Not a, you know, not solar system as in planets, but solar panels and a battery system. Just trying to work out whether it will pay for itself and how long it'll take. They suggest that it'll take about eight or nine years to pay for itself is a fair old amount of time but um, doesn't take into account the fact that you could have taken that money and invested it and it should have grown over that period so to work out how long it'll really take to pay back I suspect it's more like 15 years but I don't know if it's just about the payback or the slight joy of being somewhat self-sufficient in electricity. Maybe we can take out the gas cooker at that point and uh, start to generate and turn our house into a little kind of power station, generate our own electricity. I'm assuming this is the river here and this is a, a built-up bank for it. In fact I can check, see can I, it's on there. <laughs> Big load of blue on my uh, sat nav. Interesting little bridge. There's a lot of port activity around here, so I guess it needs some interesting bridges. I guess this one lifts. Some tonnage there, isn't there? So must take some energy to lift that. There's a train track there as well. And they'll cross the river and track him back up the other side and uh, there's the bank again. Shall we have a look? See what I can see up there, might be something interesting to look at.
Keedby Pumping Station Outfall. So we've just come across on the other side of that river, across the bridge and coming back. I kind of expected the water to be higher, so maybe this is less of a, a bank and more of a defence. Back to the mighty steed. Oh, didn't cost me anything in time anyway. <laughs> Just missed this bridge swinging across, that's a shame. There really is a lot of wind turbines around right here. Lincolnshire does give the country a lot of stuff. I think it's um, one of, if not the most, fertile areas for farming. And then with it being uh, so flat and a bit windy, there's plenty of power generation from wind turbines and see quite a bit of solar as well. Good old Lincolnshire. Don't tell them I said that though, that's obviously against the rules. We have to be at loggerheads all the time really, Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. <laughs> Unless we team up of course and become you know, north against south. <laughs> oh dear, put two people in a room and they'll find something to disagree over, won't they? <laughs> Tell you what else I've got. We've got some lovely roads. This isn't necessarily one of them. Honestly, don't know. I've never ridden down this road before, but um, it's okay. A bit bumpy, but it's okay. But they do have some really lovely roads. The nature of the farms and the way that the land has been laid out and who owns what means that there are lots of roads that kind of twist and turn between farms. And you get some fantastic riding roads. If you've never visited, it's well worth a visit. Because it's very flat as well, it does mean that you can generally see for miles. So you can really use those roads to the maximum potential within the legal limits, of course. of a church or something over there. Luddington and the Lost Medieval Village. Will I be able to find it? A little racetrack. Not a very fast one. <laughs> it's a 40 mile an hour limit. But, uh, quite fun. This is what I meant about making the most of the roads because everywhere is quite flat. Not everywhere actually, I mean there are some hilly bits but because most of it's quite flat and it's very farmy. They don't seem to have a lot of bushes around farms around here. Um, so you can get to see through the bends in a heck of a lot of the bends. You're not blocked by walls or hedges or land going up and down. So you can uh, have a bit of fun, use, use both sides of the road knowing that you'll be able to get back to the correct side if there's something coming the other way like that. We used to come round here when we were doing the IAM things um, specifically for that to come and do offsiding as they call it and straight lining bends that kind of thing just to talk about the theory and how you 
should be uh, observing and whatnot, and when when it's okay to use the right hand side of the road and when it's not. I don't necessarily do it a lot though because um, a lot of straight lining is about, well, going in a straight line which is much better for safety when the roads are slippery and wet because you know I'm to you know, lean the bike over and trying to uh, you know get the thing to put pressure on the road where a load of mud might relieve you of your grip but it's not as much fun is it having the bike upright as it is leaning it over going around the bent <laughs> <laughs>